I need me some water. All right, my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very, very nerdy with some of my favorites, alphabetically. I saw this video kind of on Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin's channel, so I will link it down below the video that I'm talking about. But he went through basically the alphabet from A to Z and found a book that started, or the title started with that letter um, of a book that he read and loved and a book that's on his TBR that he would very much like to get to. I thought that sounded like fun. So I'm gonna do A to Z favorites today, where we will start with A, end with Z, and every single letter will start, the title will start with that letter. And I'm just gonna tell you about the books that I love. If you are interested, I highly recommend everything in this video. One thing that I will say is like, we started off strong and then the last few letters, we're gonna get creative. A couple of them don't really work, but they're hard letters to find. And I worked with what I had, but almost everything on this list, I was able to find something for. So that's kind of what we're doing today. I hope you guys enjoy. Play along in the comments if you would like to with like some of your favorites of different letters. And uh, let's get started. So the very first book for A is Autobiography by Christina Lauren. This one I read a couple of years ago and absolutely loved. This is a YA book following our main character, Tanner, and he is, I believe, a senior in high school. He lives in Utah in a very, very Mormon town, and he is bi. And he's not out to the town because of where he lives, but he's out to his family and I believe he's out to his best friend as well. But his best friend, Autumn, convinces him to take part in this writing seminar class where by the end of it, you will have a book. And then the like TA or the teacher's assistant, Sebastian comes along and Hannah falls head over heels for him. And it's their friendship relationship in a very Mormon town where Sebastian comes from a ridiculously conservative Mormon family and how feelings and religion mesh. Highly recommend. It's incredible. For B, we're going to talk about Bringing Down the Duke by E.B. Dunmore. This is an adult romance, historical romance book set in England in 1879, all around the suffragette movement. We follow our main character, Annabelle, who has gotten a scholarship to Oxford as one of the very first women at Oxford, but the scholarship comes from the Oxford women's suffragette chapter, and she has to do some things for the chapter and they will pay for, you know, her college. And so she does, she kind of helps out. She creates some friends. And one of the big things is to get a big name on their side. So she goes after this Duke who is very much against all of that. Maybe not realizing it, but he's got a lot of stuff in his, you know, the, in the back of his head. He's just taken over after his father. He is trying to, you know, his father kind of messed some stuff up for him. And so he's just trying to get all of his land back and like, his title and he's really close with the queen and all of that fun stuff and it's their romance and it's steamy and cute and I loved this book so much. There's an entire series around this following all of the friends but the first one is my favorite. For C we have to go with Circe by Madeline Miller. This is an adult retelling of the kind of Greek myth surrounding Circe. Circe shows up in the Odyssey for a split second. She is the witch that turns Odysseus's men into pigs and then convinces him to stay on the island for at least a year. I think it's been, I don't think it's more than a year. Uh, so this is her story. She doesn't really have a whole lot beyond that within Greek mythology. So Madeline Miller has done her research, gone back to her lineage, tried to find everything she can about Circe, and this is her story. And it's incredible. It's very beautifully written. It is so imaginative, so lyrical, and it tells the story of someone in Greek mythology that's a woman, and women don't really get a lot of say, or women are treated very badly in Greek mythology, and so I like the idea of Circe and what Madeline Miller has done. But if you like Greek mythology and powerful women, this is your book. For D, we're going to talk about Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shannon McGuire. This is the second in the Wayward Children's series that she has created. The first one is Every Heart a Doorway. I'm saying this one because it's my favorite in the series. I love them all 
that I've read so far a lot. I really like her writing, but this one's by far my favorite. But this takes place in a world that's kind of like Alice from Alice in Wonderland, where you've got young girls and boys who go through doorways into different worlds, and these different worlds are like their home. This is where they feel like they belong, and then sometimes that home kicks them out back into the, the real world, if you will, or where they were born, and so they feel not right <laughs> because they've been to their perfect place. And so it follows all these kids as they go to this school. It's the wayward children's school and the woman who runs it understands she's been through a doorway herself. So it's just kind of this place for them to be themselves as they wait for the doors to open back up. The second one in the series follows Jack and Jill, and this takes place kind of like a prequel, if you will, to the first one. The first one takes place at the home where you're kind of understanding the world a little bit more, the home a little bit more. This gives you the story behind the characters of Jack and Jill, and I love them so much. They're my favorite, specifically Jack. I really, really love learning about Jack. She's just a fascinating character to me, but this gives you kind of like an insight into who they are. But I really like them, so I liked their story. And uh, yeah, that's my answer. For E, we're going to talk about Eligible by Curtis Sittenfield. I've talked about this so much on this channel, but this is a modernized retelling of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, which you guys know I love. So this one kind of revolves around the same plot line as you would with Pride and Prejudice, but this one kind of revolves a little bit around a dating show a little bit because the Bingley character has been on a dating show and just everything within that. The modernization of some of these characters. There's definitely some more modern topics, like for example, LGBTQIA plus people are in this book, which is great. I love this is my favorite retelling of anything. All of, I've read a lot of retellings of Jane Austen, and this is by far one of my favorites. It's an adult contemporary. It's just fun. It's got hundreds of chapters in it, so you can get through it really, really quickly. And I just, I loved the characterization of some of my favorite characters. It was great. For F, we're going to talk about Felix Ever After by Kaysen Callender. This is a YA book that follows our main character, Felix, and Felix is a trans boy. He's currently in an art school. He's just trying to live his life, and someone at this school has found Felix's pictures before he transitioned and Felix's dead name and have blasted it across the school. And this is kind of like a catfishing meets blackmail, kind of plot line because Felix is trying to figure out who did this and he thinks he knows so he catfishes this guy to pretend like he likes him and it just goes from there but I loved seeing Felix as this super messy character and so realistic and human and I loved it and you just you just fly through this book you really do and just everything surrounding Felix and all of the rep in this book is incredible so yeah for G we're going to talk about Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I just read this in April and it's now like one of my favorites. I love Talia Hibbert's writing. But this follows our main character, Chloe, who at the beginning of this book barely escapes death and almost gets hit by a car and her life flashes before her eyes and she's like, that's a really boring life. I need to get a life. So she creates a list with things on it like ride a motorcycle, go camping, have meaningless sex one night, travel the world, do things like that. And... One of the big things where she starts to get a life is she's going to move out of her parents' house into her own apartment. Now, Chloe is chronically ill, so her sisters are always coming to check on her. She has to kind of rely on other people. But there is a foreman in her apartment building named Red who owns a motorcycle. And due to circumstances, he kind of helps her out with her list. And it's the two of them. But this is so funny and great. I love... I love her writing style. I think it's just incredibly humorous in the best ways, but also like the relationship between these two characters who are so flawed, but they're like perfect for each other. I recommend wholeheartedly if you want like a romance that you're just gonna fall head over heels for. And also there's great rep in here. So yeah, I love this one. For H, we're gonna go none other than House of Earth and Blood. Excuse you? House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass, the first in the Crescent City series. I love this book so much. You guys know I've not stopped talking about how much I love this book. It's my first book that I've read by Sarah J. Mass. 
it's incredible. So this book is a lot, so it's hard to summarize into it one thing, but this follows our main character Bryce and it follows kind of about, I think it's a year after a very traumatic thing has happened in her life and she is kind of picked out by this hierarchy angel to help solve some mysterious murders that are happening in Crescent City. Now Bryce is half Fae and she gets the help of a fallen angel named Hunt and it's the two of them working together and their banter is glorious and the steamy scenes are incredible and I love this city that is just a collection of all of these fantastical magical creatures. It's incredible. I really loved it and like this gave me all of the feelings. Like I legit had every feeling. I was happy, I was sad, I was stressed, I cried, I laughed, I almost threw this book across the room, I was frustrated, and then I wanted it back because I was so happy with what happened next. So like this is incredible. I, oh if you like ma mythical magical creatures, fairies, werewolves, sea people, angels, witches, did I say that already? All these different people living in one city and like also a murder mystery plot. This is very good. For I, we're gonna go with If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo. This is a YA contemporary that follows our main character, Amanda. She is in a new town. She's living with her dad now. She's gone to a new school. However, Amanda is a trans girl, and so no one at the school knows about her past, and it's her trying to like create friends now that nobody knows about this past, and falling for a boy. And it's all of that. This is the first time I ever read a book with a trans main character and I loved that so much. I also loved that Meredith Russo herself is trans so it comes from a very real place as well which just felt incredible and I, I loved it so much. I flew, literally flew through this book so so quickly. I was obsessed with what was happening. It, it was, uh, it was so good. For Jay, we're going to go with another Christina Lauren book, and that is Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating. This is an adult YA contemporary romance that follows Josh and Hazel, who are friends and are very convinced that they are only friends and that they will only ever be friends, and so they start setting each other up with other people just so they can hang out with each other. And it's their friendship that turns possibly into other things. And I love them so much because they're so polar opposites. Hazel is this kind of wild, child, crazy, chaotic energy, and Josh is very, like, cool. And it's the two of them and how great of a friendship they have. And I loved it. It's also very steamy. It's one of the first books where it was super, super steamy, and I was not expecting it. But I loved it, and it was great. The next one for K is maybe stretching it just a tiniest bit, but I'm going to go with To Kill a Kingdom by Alexander Christo. Technically, two is its own word, but we're going to go with it being like the, and it doesn't count. So this follows our main character, who I've forgotten her name, Princess Lyra, and this is kind of, is it kind of like a Little Mermaid retelling? Not really. I mean, it is in a sense that our main character is a siren, and then she turns human um, because of the sea witch but it's very different in this book. So the point of Sirens is to collect hearts of humans. Now it says in here that Lyra only collects the hearts of princes. I can't remember if that's something that all of them do or just her. It's been a little while since I've read this, but she ends up, based on circumstances in the beginning of the book, she ends up killing one of her own and her mother, who is a sea witch, turns her human as punishment um, to get this kind of like last heart. And so she is put on this ship and it's run by a prince whose sole purpose in life is to kill sirens. And it's the two of them. And it's so cute. And I loved every second of it. I flew through this in just a couple of days. It was very, very good. For Elle, we're going to talk about Longborn by Joe Baker. This is another kind of reimagining of the story of Pride and Prejudice. However, this one is from the servants in Longborn. It's like it's from their point of view. Now, Longborn is the house where all the Bennett family lives. And this takes place primarily from one servant's perspective. I think her name is Sarah. It is. And so it's her perspective as a new footman arrives at this house and what happens from there. And this book was spurred by one sentence about a footman showing up in the Bennett household and then never being seen again. Because on Pride and Prejudice, the servants are very much not part of the story because it is mostly about these other people and they're just kind of like there. And this takes 
and switches that and we rarely see the Bennett family. I mean, we do because they are their employers, like all of them, their life basically surrounds around the Bennetts. But besides like one or two characters, this is about the servants. We rarely see any of the main characters from Pride and Prejudice. However, it is things are mentioned so it's kind of cool to see the timeline of like what happens in Pride and Prejudice through the eyes of the servants that don't ever leave Longbourn. But I thought this was a very imaginative way to look at a story that we all know and love but from a very different perspective. For M, I couldn't do anything other than The Missing Manuscript of Jane Austen by Sari James. I love this book. So this follows our main character Samantha who opens up a poetry book and in the back of it, which is definitely a thing that happens in kind of old books that are published sometimes, they would split the pages. That's how they were printed. And so she does that and finds this unfinished letter from Jane Austen to her sister. And she mentions a manuscript that no one has found. And so our main character goes through and like searches and tries to figure out where this manuscript is, hones down on the house, and she and the man who owns this house find the manuscript and read it. And this book is 85%, I would say, the actual manuscript. So you're reading like another Jane Austen book, but it's an early edition according to like this book. It's, it's very early on in her writing career. So you see a bunch of nods to her other books and like characters that eventually become the Mr. Collins character or the Mrs. Bennett character and things like that. And so it's very fascinating to see that. I also love that Sari James writes like Jane Austen and it is a little modernized because there's definitely some things that are easier to understand than like a Jane Austen book. Some of the stakes in the in the manuscript in here are different because some of the stakes in Jane Austen's novels probably wouldn't appeal to people today because it's it there's the whole like time difference but beyond those things she writes like Jane Austen I really could believe that this manuscript is a Jane Austen book and I just I loved diving into it. I flew through this book and was utterly obsessed with it. It was so good. For N we're gonna go with a graphic novel and that is Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. This follows our main character Nimona who is a shapeshifter and she's fantastic and she wants to be the sidekick of kind of like the villain in this world and so she kind of annoys her way into doing that and it's that as well as the relationship between her and this man as like friendship between them as well as the relationship between the villain and the hero as well because they have a past and I just I love it it's a one and done standalone I think it's incredible I think the art style is very colorful and fun and it's just like it takes good and evil and it just kind of like twists it and makes you question everything. And also there are dragons. So it's great. For O, we're going to go with Of Curses and Kisses by Sendaya Menon. This is a YA contemporary kind of reimagination. Wow, that's a word. Reimagining of Beauty and the Beast, the story of Beauty and the Beast. So we follow our main character, Jaya Rao, Princess Jaya Rao. And she goes to this very private school where a bunch of like princes and higher like really really rich and high up people's children go because they need to be out of the limelight they need to be away from paparazzi they just need to be hidden and protected because they're the children of these people now there is a centuries old feud between jaya and this other family and she finds out that the son of that family jay gray gray emerson is also at this school and it's the two of them and she tries to befriend him so she can break his heart and that's her revenge on the family and that's gonna go so well but also Grey also thinks that there's like a curse surrounding him and yeah it's great I love it it's definitely a contemporary but it does it does have some of those like fantastical elements to it I highly recommend I love Sandia Menon's writing. She writes incredible cheesy romances that just like warm your heart and I love them so much. For P, are we surprised? It's gonna be Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I will say I had a very hard decision between picking this one and Persuasion by Jane Austen because I also love Persuasion but I think I think Pride and Prejudice wins just the tiniest bit but I've had a lot of books that revolve around this on this list if you couldn't tell I love it. It is Jane Austen's most popular books. I'm sure many people know what this is about but it does follow our main character Elizabeth and she is the second child of five and 
her mom is crazy. Her mom is obsessed with marrying off all of her children because there are no sons in this family and she needs all of her daughters to be married off to good families. And it's her when she meets this very, very rich man named Mr. Darcy. And uh, they do not get off on the right foot at all. There's a lot of tension there. This is like the ultimate beginning first hate to love romance. I love it so much. I love their story. I love Jane Austen. They are incredible. Everyone needs a Mr. Darcy. Just saying. For Q, we're actually going to go with The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. This is the third in the Folk in the Air series, the Cruel Prince series, if you will, by her. Um, I This is a step in for basically the entire series because I love this series so much. But it follows our main character, Jude, who is human. And she is taken by her stepfather, who is Faye, to this Faye world. But because she's human, everyone looks down on her. All the Faye look down on her. And in the first book, she butts heads with the cruel prince named Cardin. And, uh, yeah, she gets really involved in politics. Family, like, politics within the ruling family of this Faye world. And this is just the third one that continues from the craziness that is that story and I love them so much. For R we're gonna go with Roaring by Lindsay Duga. I love this book. I talk about this book all all the time. This book surrounds a girl named Eris or Iris and uh, she is a siren but she doesn't know that she's a siren. She just knows that she has these siren abilities and this is set in a world where there's kind of like an FBI government agency that is tracking these mythical dangerous creatures and sirens are considered to be dangerous because of their abilities to influence people's thoughts to do things. And so it follows her and it follows this man named Colt who is from the agency and he's like the best of the best and he's been tracking the siren forever but she's been kind of hidden for years and he finally finds her. And uh oh the craziness that becomes of them. It's like an adventure road. And it's not really even a road trip. It's just like they're trying to outrun craziness, basically. And it's so fun. I loved it so much. I got an e-arc of NetGalley. This was, I think, one of the very first NetGalley arcs I ever read. And the minute I was done, I was like, ah, I need me a physical copy. So sorry for the shine. But this is my physical copy. It's very fun. It's very scientific when it surrounds the, like how these creatures came to be. But I love it. I love all the mythical creatures in this. Because there there's everything. Vampires, cyclopses, dragons, werewolves. Is there werewolves? There are werewolves. Sirens, obviously. It's just all of this craziness. And it's great. For S, we definitely have to go with The School for Good and Evil by Somin Chainani. I talk about this series all of the time. It is now officially finished. So if you do want to get interested or involved in the series, there are six in it. And so, like, you don't have to wait anymore. They're all out. But this world is a very fantastical world that really puts the question of good versus evil and like what is good, what is evil, fairy tales, things of that nature. But the first book in this series follows two best friends, Sophie and Agatha, in this town. And every year or so, every few years, I can't remember exactly when it is, but two kids are stolen from this town. And Sophie's like, it's this theory of you're going to go to the school for good and evil and one person is stolen for good and one person is stolen for evil. And that's what happens. And so Sophie and Agatha are both taken and they're both like, oh, I'm for sure going to the school for good or the school for evil. And then they get dropped off in the reverse school of what they thought they were going. And it's very like magic school first year vibes with this one and also these two girls kind of figuring out who they are and their friendship and, you know, fun stuff like that. If you like fairy tales and like a twist on fairy tales, this is your series. For tea, we definitely had to go with To Have and to Hoax by Martha Waters. This is an adult romance historical fiction that I very much love, but it follows a couple, Violet and James, and they've been married for five years, but they have not been speaking for four because they had this huge fight and they are at odds. And so this book starts with a little bit of a misunderstanding of James falling off his horse at his country home and Violet freaking out, thinking that he's dead, running to his aid to find that he's totally fine. And so she's like, I'm going to get him back for this, even though it's not really his fault that this thing happened in the first place. But I'm going to get him back for this. And so it's like a prank war to out prank each other. And then through it, they start talking again and start falling for each other again and all of that fun stuff. And I love Martha Waters' writing. She's very, very fun. Her banter between our characters is great. Just like the little jabs they make at each other. 
are fantastic. So, oh, oh, I, I love this author. I will read anything by her. The next one for you is yet another Christina Lauren. I feel like there's a theme here. And that is The Unhoneymooners. This is a fun contemporary romance that surrounds a trip to Maui. So we follow our main character, Olive, who at the beginning of this book, her sister is getting married and she cannot stand the best man, Ethan, who is actually the brother of the guy her sister is marrying. And due to circumstances at the reception, everyone gets food poisoning except for Olive and Ethan. And so they go on this honeymoon because it can't be refunded for the happy couple and they think they're just gonna go and relax and never talk to each other and then things happen and they have to pretend to be newly married and it's the two of them getting over past things and it's good. This is the first adult romance that I read by Christina Lauren and I really highly recommend it. It definitely is a good beach read or a summer read because it makes you want to go to the pool or to the beach or something like that because of where it's set on a very tropical island. But I love them. It's a little bit of a hate to love. Actually, it's very much a hate to love. It's a fake engagement at some points. It's got all of the fun tropes in it. I love it. For V, we're going to do Voices, which is the final hours of Joan of Arc by David Elliott. This is kind of, I have it in my poetry section, but it is a book set kind of in verse, kind of in poetry, surrounding Joan of Arc. What I find the most interesting about this book and why I love it so much is that this book is from the perspective of all of these different people, all of these different objects that surround Joan of Arc. And so they're telling her story for her, but it's in like the most interesting ways because you've got people who actually like fought with her, you've got things like that, but then you also have like the perspective of the fire that burns her and her shield and her sword and like things like that that just have been around her. And it's, ugh. It, it's really fascinating. I like the idea of it. I think it's very creative and it's also incredibly beautifully written. It works for the time. It kind of has like that older English feel to it because of, you know, it's based around Joan of Arc. But it also has snippets from the actual trials of Joan of Arc, which I find very fascinating. I highly recommend it. This is, this is, I need to reread this. It was so good. The next one for W, I'm going to talk about Who I Was With Her by Nita Tyndall. This, I believe, is her debut. I don't think I've seen anything else by her out there. This book is incredible. This is one of those books that I got in, in that galley e-arc from. And within the first 20 to 25% of this book, I immediately went out and pre-ordered it because I loved this book so much. So this follows our main character, Corinne, who has a secret girlfriend named Maddie from a separate team. She is a on the running team at her school. And so that's how she met her girlfriend, Maggie, and they've been secret for years. But then Maggie gets killed in a car accident. And she like, Corinne doesn't even know how to process this because no one knew she was dating Maggie. So she can't really be sad and share her feelings to anybody because nobody knew except for I think Maggie's brother. And so she ends up connecting with Alyssa, who is Maggie's ex-girlfriend and the two of them kind of connect because they can actually talk to each other about Maggie. And this book is told in different, like a timeline that's all over the place. You've got a timeline that shows you the relationship of Curran and Maggie. I said her name wrong. You have the plot line of when she finds out after Maggie's death and then you also have in between those snippets of conversations and you're watching the relationship between Corinne and Maggie and how it developed. This is just incredibly beautifully written because it tackles grief in such a very fascinating and interesting way because not only can Corinne not confide in anybody, she also goes through all of these different varieties of how she grieves. She's really sad. She gets angry. She, you know, has all of these different things that she does because of her grief. And I love the representation of someone like one person be going through all of these different ways because grief is such a personal thing that it can take the form so many different forms in so many different ways but it's incredible it's not the happiest of stories obviously because it's about grief but it's one of the most well-written ones I've ever read it's definitely up there on like my favorites of all time I really really love this book so we're starting to get into some of the ones that don't really work. So the next one is the first one. There's really only two that don't really work. Um, and that's X. And I had no books that started with X 
that I have read. So we're going with The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo because even though it doesn't start with an X, it's got an X in it and that's the best I could do. <laughs> this is, I love Elizabeth Acevedo's writing. She's an incredible writer. She's so beautiful and lyrical in her writing and just the way she looks at the world is fascinating. So I love all of her books, but this one specifically follows Zia Mara and she comes from a very, very religious Harlem neighborhood. Well, very religious family, but she lives in a Harlem neighborhood and she discovers poetry in this book. And it's about her discovery of that and kind of expressing it and things like that. This is written in verse. Elizabeth Acevedo is very well known for writing in verse. And I think for this story, it works really, really well. But it's great. I She's, she's becoming a slam poet and learning kind of how to do that and share her her thoughts through poetry it's oh it's so well done the next one is why and for that i have a poetry collection and that is yesterday i was the moon by nor unar this one is one i read a couple of years ago and tapped the crap out of but i I loved this one. Uh, I'm going to read you the little thing here because it's the best way I can describe it. And it says, this book contains poetry about art, heart, people, home, you, courage, self-love, strength, culture, acceptance, survival, in no particular order. And just like every time I tagged one is a poem that resonated with me personally. So I, I need to give this a reread because it's been quite a while. But her style is so incredible. It's definitely these smaller poems, things like that. There's definitely illustrations in this book as well. So if you like you know, poets like Rupi Kaur, I think you'll like this. I just personally resonated a lot with this. And I don't know if this author has anything else out or if this poet has anything else out, but I need everything by them. Um, oh, she's great. And the last one for Z is another one that I'm stretching because I couldn't come up with anything. Like literally nothing on my shelves had a Z. And it besides this book, I think. And that is Pride and Prejudice and Zombies by Jane Austen and Seth Graham Smith. Zombies, Z, that's what I've got. Uh, so this is another retelling of Pride and Prejudice, but if zombies existed. So Seth Graham Smith took the manuscript of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice and just hacked at it and put in all of these situations that have zombies in it. And I like it because it's so ridiculous. Like you need to go into this knowing it. it's going to be ridiculous fun. So you have to kind of go in knowing it's going to be all kind of funny. Uh, but at the same time, it's very imaginative because some of the situations that are in this book, I feel like if zombies actually existed in Regency England, they would react this way. Uh, but yeah, it's just kind of the story of Pride and Prejudice, roughly, but with zombies and all of the sisters are learning how to fight zombies. And like, if you could fight zombies, you're high up on like the marriage list, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Those are the A through Zs of my favorites, kind of. I had to cheat on a couple because I didn't have anything. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down below if you played along or if you can come up with some of your favorites for any of the letters. I'd love to know that. Or if you've read any of the books that I mentioned in this video, let me know because I love all of these books. But if you did like this video, and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you want to be part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media as well as other fun bookish links down there, so don't forget to go check all of those out. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!